last time on Herb Vendor. So there I was, returning to the game for the first time since a bunch of stupid drama had driven away a majority of my guilt. And to be honest with you, it had kind of driven me away too. I've never really been an argumentative person, and most of the time when shit hits the fan, I kind of like to just sit back and wait for things to blow over. But nothing was blowing over this time. Our friend Buddy Beatdown had been spending quite a bit of time spreading rumors about my guild and myself, leading to most people leaving the guild and me taking an extended break from the game. During that time away, I had hatched a plan. A redemption arc for the guild and myself. A true golden egg of an idea that when hatched would restore our good name here on Moonguard. I knew that no normal achievement would suffice on a roleplay server. No one would give a shit if I got Gladiator or ahead of the curve. It had to be something of universal understanding within the community. But what was one thing that needed change here on Moonguard? Goldshire. If someone were to be able to hypothetically clean up the area, they would surely be respected by the more prominent serious roleplay guilds here on the server. When my friends and I finally showed up, we weren't surprised to see a ton of the people in the inn. But I knew we had to start somewhere. I figured our best bet would be to pick up one of the most depraved individuals we could find. Most of the time, they'd be lurking in the basement area, or Goon Cave, as it's affectionately titled by the player base here. I didn't know what that meant, but d don't Google it. Don't, uh, don't Google it. We were discussing our plan within said basement when Zarin here approached us. Welcome to the crib, Zarin. A lot of guys down here. Yeah, because we're smoking weed. Like cool goth bad boys. Guys being dudes. I knew that Zarin would be the perfect candidate for my plan. This was further confirmed when I read their roleplay profile. This was a pretty extreme amount of degeneracy we were working with here, so I knew we had to tread lightly. The easiest option felt like boosting Zarin's confidence to levels that would catapult her well out of the mindset that the easiest way to make gold was by letting British wolves fuck her. If gold is what Zarin wanted, we had plenty, and I had assumed it would be a welcome change of pace to be paid to keep clothing on for once. Thanks, my lords. Don't remove that tabard for anyone. I go next. Ooh, woo boy, get the fuck out. Thank you for understanding. After several minutes of conversation, I figured I would shoot Zarin a guild invite, to which she accepted. And even if it wasn't the guild tabard, I was just happy that she had put some clothing on. Remove the tabard for no one. You wish for me to remove it? No. I wish for you to keep it on. It's 3k then. I'll pay. Ooh, oh boy. Thank you. Then, as if Uwu Boy hadn't been distraction enough, Sham Poopy decided to show up. Sham, your eyes look like you're slow as shit. <laughs> oh my. Worry not of what he speaks. Wait, why are you drunk? Why is she drunk now? I like to drink. Can we, like... Let's get you into some shoes. Ooh, boy, you've grown. What now, bitch? Yeah, leave. Bitch. With Uwu boy out of the picture, and Zarin in clothing finally, we set off on our journey. Our first stop would be Stormwind, specifically the Cathedral, a building which I'm usually banned from entering because we pretended to set the basement on fire this one time. But this was important. Zarin needed to be cleansed of her past sins, as well as all the weird shit she'd claimed to have done with Pandaren. I was surprised to be met with opposition, but then again, Zarin was a strong independent woman, strong enough even to grow a wiener. And if that was some token ability she insisted on keeping, okay, it's not like it would have mattered anyway, not even the medical clinic guild was down to help us. Eventually, Zarin said she was logging off for the evening, so my friends and I just chilled and walked around for a while. Some time passed and I noticed that Zarin had never left the party. And you guessed it, she was back in Goldshire. Normally it would have been impossible to find her in this weird mass of people, so I marked her ass for death. We were displeased to find her in her current state. It had only been like 
20 minutes since we said goodbye to her. The right move at the time, though, felt like letting her do her thing. If she wanted to make gold by cucking Drain Eye, have fun. At the end of the day, what mattered most was that Zarin had joined our guild and was making an at least semi-conscious effort to involve herself in less promiscuous forms of roleplay here on Moonguard. The next evening, when I signed on, I was pretty excited. It had been a while since there was an in-game event going on, and it was finally time. Brewfest had begun on WoW. Normally, my experiences with Brewfest were limited to the daily instance where you kill that dwarf dude in that mountain. But here on Moonguard, we do holiday events a little differently, and any excuse to party is one that we really enjoy. I was surprised the crowd was so big, and it was really nice that pretty much everyone was there just having a good time. There was even a hot dog eating contest, and competition was heating up like really quick. Like all contests, I knew there had to be some sort of a prize driving these individuals to such a competitive rage. What was leading them to rapidly consume this tubid meat? Riches? Eternal life? I wanted to find out. There was like a really long line though, literally. So I just met up with my friends instead. Cute little bread was online. And even though she had left the guild because of all the drama, it was really nice hanging out with an old friend again. Dr. Steve was there as well. With the bonds of their friendship, I felt empowered to do the hot dog thing. So like a respectable individual, I got in line to wait my turn. You're all going down. My character is stoned and ready for tubed meats. Is it really hot dogs? During the conversation in line, this elusive gear icon had been drawing me in. What secrets did it hold? What ancient truths would be bequeathed onto me if I clicked it? What do I do? Do I just... Oh, dude, I'm sitting down. Oh, shit. Sorry. Uh, how, uh... I had lost my place in line, and the guy wouldn't give it back because he really wanted to be that blue color. It didn't matter, because it was time. We took our seats on the gestational battlefield. My competition was fierce. Mage lady. My friend bred. Demon dude with hat. Little did they know, however, that my character is canonically stone, and his stomach is like a bottomless pit that was ready to hoover vac those hot dogs. The contest had begun and immediately I felt like I had taken the lead. I was effortlessly decimating the food, when suddenly my character started to chip. Oh, I'm gonna throw up, dude! This wasn't just a button mash, there was actually strategy to be had, and unfortunately, dude with hat knew how to do it. We ran into Weed Elf at the event. It was really cool seeing him. I hadn't really gone on any roleplay journeys with him lately, because as much as I hated to admit it, the drama with the Stormwind City Guard and the rumors Buddy Beatdown were spreading kind of scared him off. It sucked. This was someone I had really enjoyed spending time with in-game. And if we're being honest, is the person I learned pretty much everything I know about RP from. He was a good friend, and watching him slip away was a reminder of how I needed to restore the guild's reputation. Like everything I had been doing was in vain, though. That's when a guild member tipped me off to something. There was a situation in Stormwind, something that needed to be seen ASAP. When I got there, I couldn't believe what I was looking at. Zarin was role-playing, and it wasn't sexual. I couldn't believe the plan was working. I happily bought a drink from her and took a seat as she served some other dudes. I was so proud of Zarin. When she finally had time to talk, she told me she had gone to a job fair in town and took up a job as a bartender at the Slaughtered Lamp. Good for Zarin, and good for Herbs of Anarchy. We'd taken a wiener-wielding warlock and changed her into a... She hadn't changed her public RP profile. Everyone in the bar who was purchasing a drink was seeing this. This was her battle to fight if anyone had an issue with it. After all, look at Zarin. She was RPing now. Our plan was successful, and now we merely waited for the community to see what a changed woman Zarin was. She changed, all right. She left the guild and told me it's because someone in a motorcycle guild was telling her all this horrible and completely untrue shit that my guild and I have done. Not this again. I knew it was finally time to confront the source of the rumors. He was obviously online, if Zarin had just talked to him, so I made my way to Goldshire. Once again, I couldn't find Buddy Beatdown. As hard as I'd tried to, I just couldn't get a hold of Buddy to figure out exactly what was going on. The most logical route would have been Discord, but he had blocked me so I couldn't message him. I figured I'd check for him in Goldshire one more time. I wasn't surprised when I couldn't find him, but I did find someone on a motorcycle. I thought it was a coincidence. I mean, they were in a completely different guild than Buddy was. Wrong. It seemed like he had left his old guild and created a new one. I knew my only shot to get a hold of him was through whoever his guildmate here was. I whispered them. To my surprise, they responded. We talked for, I shit you not, like 30 minutes. All the while, I'm in a Discord call with cute little bread and a few of our other friends. We're all like freaking out because we think we're finally going to get to the bottom of things or whatever. The person explains that Buddy isn't who people think he is, and that he's into some pretty interesting gameplay. They explain that he's been instructing their guild to report me on all forms of content, as well as talk shit about myself and the guild whenever possible. 
great. That's cool. At this point, I'm like confiding in this person about the whole situation, explaining where I'm coming from, that I mean no harm, all of that. I'm doing some heated speed typing at this point. That's when I accidentally opened my friends list. I didn't know exactly what I was looking at at first. And when I finally did notice, I didn't even know how to feel about it. This Shauna Harper individual was my good friend, cute little Brett. To make the situation even fucking weirder, I had been in a Discord call with cute little Brett the entire time this conversation had been going on. Now you might be wondering, how is Brett currently online in your party with you, as well as online on the Shauna Harper person? You can pretty much literally only be on one character at a time. Unless, you're paying two subscriptions, under two emails, all within the same WoW account. Like I had said earlier in the video, I'm not a confrontational person, but Alun didn't raise no bitch. So I called Brett out on it like immediately. If there's one thing I've learned from my content creation idol Barney, it's to record everything. So here's that exact moment. Britain, you're Shauna Harper? What the fuck? Wait. I'm so confused. So yeah, I alt f 4 out a WoW and left the Discord call for a minute to gather my thoughts. They were going wild. Brett had been one of my best friends in-game and out of WoW in my Discord community for like a year now. They'd spent a ton of time shit-talking Buddy Beatdown recently, and being a beacon of empathy for our guild after Buddy had started spreading the homophobia rumors. I calmed myself down and figured I'd hop back into the call and maturely approach the situation with Brett. They had disconnected. I had alt tabbed back into WoW, and guess who else had disconnected? Donna Harper. My guildmates were going apeshit in the voice chat, and we all decided to log off and figure it out the next day. When I woke up that next morning, I figured I'd have a message from Brett. Something. Mail in game. Any kind of explanation. But I didn't. I had been blocked and removed from their Battle.net friends list. A few guildies, however, had received a little parting note. I'm going to be taking a break from WoW for a while and probably won't be active on the Discord anymore. I'll message everyone that I will be leaving, so I do not want it to be talked about not discussed in future streams. I will not badmouth anyone here or you. I wish the same for me in return. If for some reason people do ask where I gone, just don't answer it. Thank you for all this. I will miss you all dearly, but it's just my time to go. Some of us did some investigating and discovered that Brett had quite a few alts in game. Donna Harper, of course. And it turns out Brett was her best friend Olivia Melton, who we were introduced to last time I had played. Oh, and remember Skyla Hunt? One of the first people I met when I started trying to roleplay? Yep, all bread. We were really taken aback. The whole situation was just getting weirder and weirder at this point, but the dots started connecting themselves, and things started to make sense. Brett had been one of the only people that never talked during group voice calls in my community Discord. I'd kind of understand that, but I mean, who's playing fucking PC games in 2024 that doesn't own a microphone? And it's not that Brett didn't own a microphone, it's just that it quote-unquote didn't work on Discord. Uh-huh. There were other signs, too. Red was very open with sharing selfies on my community Discord. Selfies that pretty much all looked to be received snap messages. They're blurred because I'm pretty sure they're stolen pictures and I feel really bad for whoever the poor girl in them is. That's not a cool thing to do. It was feeling like an episode of that catfish show now and I was ready to deep dive investigate this shit. I knew there was one more crumb of evidence for me to, I don't know what you do with crumbs, hold it. But when I had first started growing a bit on Twitch, I had set up a PayPal for donations. Well, I mean, not really made a new one so much as I was idiotically using my already existing personal PayPal. Problem with that is that I hadn't realized it would show me my donators full ass real names upon donating. This is something I would have lost my shit over, but the only two people who had donated were one of my extremely trusted mods, I love you, and... Bread. I wish there was a more climactic ending to the whole guild drama saga for you guys, and selfishly I wish I had more answers for myself. The entire situation had torn my guild apart and left all of us remaining members with some intense trust issues. I didn't know where to go from here, but I knew it was time to start over. There is a darkness within man. Some may avert their eyes. And I am afraid you will peer into it. A wandering night elf on the shores of Yojamba. He is the Her Vendor, 